All right. Welcome back to another episode of Shifting Schools. We have got a great one for you today. Trisha and I just off a call with Max, who is a senior at Bainbridge Island High School, talking about uh, AI in his life and uh, just ideas and thoughts for teachers. Trisha, what was kind of your big takeaway from talking with Max today? Just like hugely important to listen to students, right? And Mm. to not make assumptions about how they might be using technology. I think across the board, it doesn't have to be AI, any technology. Um, You know, we sat down for about 30 minutes with Max. And I do think if your school is not like having a student panel or, you know, even just within your own classroom, making that time to find out how are they using it? What are their thoughts? Yeah. What are they excited about? What might they wor- be worried about? Um, I, I think anybody that listens to this episode is just going to be fired up to be thinking, we need to hear our students and we need to make yeah. space so that they are heard. Yeah. And I love at the end, Max goes into even just saying, you've got to play with it. You've got to experience it yourself. And that's, you know, we keep saying that here as well. Um, and that's actually how I met Max is I was over working with, uh, teachers at Bainbridge school district and, and, uh, some teachers at the, at Bainbridge high school. And, uh, the librarian came up to me and said, Hey, we actually have a student here who wants to talk to the teachers. And this was now, remember this is summertime. Kids aren't in school. This was a back to school, uh, PD day back in August, uh, technology day that they have, uh, at their district. And, uh, yeah, Max comes over and he, basically kicks me off of the screen and and hooks up his own computer and does an incredible job uh, talking to teachers about the ways that he and students are leveraging AI uh, and just helping to support teachers in understanding what it is. And I, I just, I think it's, it's to your point, it's so critical that we listen to students. I mean, I loved, cause I've been wanting to ask him this since he, uh, I've seen him, I saw him back in August was just around the social emotional aspect. Cause he touched on it a little bit. And I'm so glad we got to dig in that today around how this generation is leveraging things like AI for their own se- social and mental well being. And I think that's just, it's, it's something that I don't think we think about a lot as adults, but he, I did, I think did a really good job of articulating what does this mean for him and his generation about having things like this at his disposal. So uh, I thought that was pretty incredible as well. Yeah. He packs, I mean, it's a 30 minute conversation, but he packs so much insight and guidance into this on so many different issues. Like I just marveled over how much really thoughtful advice he was able to bring to the table in this short period of time. So I really thank listeners. Um, this is one that's actually really great to listen to get a few folks together, have a walking meeting. Um, This would be a really great episode to listen to as a team of teachers. Yeah, agreed, agreed. Before we get over to that amazing interview with Max, Trisha has a new announcement. We have a new three-week online course that we are launching in the new year. Trisha, do you want to tell everybody about the PLC AI Playground? I'm really excited about this. This is sort of an organic evolution of the ongoing cohorts that we've been hosting. And it links a lot with what Max had to say in terms of you have to experiment with these tools. You have to, again, push past maybe that resistance and find out for yourself, where are the opportunities? Now, Jeff, you and I stress all the time that whenever there is sort of a a disruption it's really important that you do that learning with community. So this upcoming opportunity really looks to leverage that. We are setting up our online playground that's intentionally focused on a PLC or a committee that said, we want to learn about AI literacy together. So we've got three weeks. Every every week we'll have a challenge. So again, you've got something to work towards as a team and you have a lot of support. We know that matters as well. Um, so uh, again, we we do our best to make sure that it's thinking about your context, thinking about your needs. So the cohort is limited seats because there's only Jeff and I facilitating and we want to do our best to make sure you get that personalized experience. Early bird registration is open right now. So please do head over to the show notes and learn more about that opportunity. We love when we have podcast listeners inside the cohort. Um, I think it's just kind of nice to have that 
Shifting Schools community feel. So we hope we see you there. Yeah. And of course, you know, you can always use that code SSPOD25 to save $25 off. That's our gift to you for being a Shifting Schools podcast listener. That's SSPOD25. Anything you want to buy over at camp.shiftingschools.com. Of course, you can find more information at shiftingschools.com uh, or everywhere else. You'll notice it'll be in the show notes as well. Uh, but please, we'd love to we'd love to see you over there. Again, limited to 55 people. Uh, we've been selling these out. So you're going to want to get in and reserve your spot now. So with that, we are going to head on over and here is Max, a high school senior talking all about AI from the perspective of a student. All right. Thank you for joining us on today's episode. Really appreciate it. I did want to remind everyone that we are giving away an all-inclusive AI package for those of you who are the first inside your state or the first from your country to leave us a review over on Spotify, on Apple podcast, you can send us an email uh, and let us know uh, what you think that we can post on the website. But what we are doing is we would like to fill up a map of trying to get a review from every state and as many countries as possible. We know we are listened to in over 150 different countries, uh, according to our data on our end. And we just love to be able to make that public. Uh, so if you can leave us a review or over on, again, Spotify or Apple podcast or any other place that you can leave reviews of podcasts, we would love to give you the all-inclusive AI adventure. It's $275 value uh, for spending some time leaving reviews for us uh, on the internet. Of course, that helps us grow our podcast and helps us be reached by others. Trisha, anything else you want to add? Just again, thank you for listening. And if you are taking the time to do that, please know that we're always interested to learn more about episodes, mini series that you would love to see Jeff and I produce. So if you've got an idea of a focus that you'd love to see us spotlight in 2024, you can always drop us a line about that too. Info at shiftingschools.com is the place that you can send that. Awesome. Hoping to see those reviews and online. And with that, we'll see you on the network. Welcome back to the Shifting Schools podcast. I'm uh, so excited to have a special guest with us here today, uh, Max Richards, uh, a senior from Bainbridge Island High School that I ran into this summer doing some presentations with staff. Uh, and Max blew me away. And so I wanted to have him on as a guest uh, of the podcast to share his experience with AI, uh, with being a senior in high school. So Max, welcome to the show. Give us a little bit about your background and uh, where, where are you at and what, what are your hopes for? Thank you. So currently I'm a senior at Bainbridge High School. Um, I work a lot with teachers basically using instructional tech technology. Like I've coined the term instructional technology coach that I like to use for myself because I feel like there's a gap between, you know, the technology that teachers use and then how that really goes to students, how that's presented in the classroom and how students can connect with that. So that's something I work with and yeah, that's pretty cool. And do you, is there a class that you're taking or you've just decided this is what you do? Well, we have this um, program in our school. We have an academic coach program Okay. and I have that six period and I use that time, basically that class period to, you know, help teachers and present, and, you know, any ways that teachers need help. Yeah. I'm here for. I'm and what, kinda... what are you thinking after high school? What do you want to do? I'm thinking about possibly going into education and cybersecurity. Ooh. So a wide range, but my favorite things. So, yeah. <laughs> Max, awesome. I'm really curious about that program almost right off the bat, because I know we'll have some listeners who are thinking, yeah, there is this gap and it's so important to give students that leadership position to let them step in and do that coaching for somebody who's listening and is saying, I want that program at my school. Like, what do they need to do to get that off the ground? Like, you know, do you have a recommendation if they want to start it yeah. in the new year? What would they have to do? 
Totally. I'd say, so how this, how it works at our school is if a student has a free period, most likely upper classroom because, you know, less academic classes, you can use that time. We have a career specialist at our school and she runs the academic coach program. And basically what it is, is there's a wide variety. Like you can go if you're an academic coach and teach at an elementary school. We have lots of those. Lots of my friends do that. And I'd say providing students with a space that they feel comfortable to learn you know, the basic tools of, you know, how to teach, how to interact with younger students and provide them with that support is key. And then you pretty much just go from there. Because I'd say one of my favorite things I always like to say is just learn by doing Mm -hmm. and putting yourself into that position within a classroom with, you know, teaching students is probably the biggest thing. So just allowing students to have that time and that space to do that would be the main thing. It was very cool. That's exactly how I got started my senior year. I got to spend uh, three hours a day uh, back down in an elementary classroom in the fourth grade, elementary classroom. And then I become a fourth grade teacher because that's where my passion was. And uh, I ended up winning a um, community service award for all the time that I spent down there because I spent more time than I was supposed to. And that launched my education. I was all in at age 17. There was no looking at any other place. So uh, I know firsthand how great those programs can be and just helping you understand if this is something you want to do. So that's so great that your school has that opportunity and has allowed you to do this at the high school level where oh, yeah. you've, you've, you've become, you were called, you call yourself the instructional technology coach uh, for high school teachers. So I think that's great. I want to yeah. talk to you a little bit about uh, AI uh, mm-hmm. and from the student perspective, where, where, what are you seeing uh, as far as leveraging this as a senior in high school uh, or what are you hearing from your friends? Just kind of maybe give us a background on, on kind of from a student perspective, what's going on with AI with you? Totally. Well, I'd say, you know, working a lot with my friends, people come down to the library and I, I talk to them about it because it's something that, you know, we've never had before. We've had the easy, you know, Google this, you know, we have a, paper come in and there's a lot of questions. It's like, well, you just Google it and Google provides you kind of with the basic answer. And it's like a teacher could just be like, okay, you Google that. But um, today I actually was using it on an assignment where we had to watch a video and the video went low. It was about the um, Washington State Constitution. So I actually went in and I was just using it to talk, just kind of to get ideas, honestly. And I was just asking it and then seeing what it provided me with was a big, long paragraph. And it was actually kind of nice because I could take the stuff that I wanted from that paragraph and put it into my own words and write that down. Mm. And I'd say students are using it mainly not to just cheat and write whole entire essays, but to actually kind of go in more than just a Google search, more Mm. than just, you know, let's ask Siri or whoever a question about how to do this. It's kind of, people are starting to use it as a learning tool and not necessarily just like a quick search engine. Mm. And I think that's something that's really satisfying and, being able to ask it to do something and, you know, have it provide you with information that's like accurate and in AP biology, our teacher actually was like, you know what, if there's a question that you have about one of our assignments before you email me, you know, ask chat, ask oh, AI very cool. um, before you come contact me. And, you know, for stuff like that, it explains it really nicely. Mm. And that's one of the main things I'd say we all use it for here at school. Mm. Go for it, Tricia. Well, I'm just, you know, the the connection with bio is really a relevant one that you brought up. Uh, My folks actually had a doctor's visit. They know that I'm really interested in AI. So they were just kind of sharing some of the conversations we've been having. And their doctor was saying, you know, that he's really excited because what it means in terms of how quickly research can be done and can be sped up. Mm. Oh, You know, again, some of the potential cures that... Uh, we're going to be able to have because of AI. Um, And that makes me think, you know, for your generation, especially if there is not time and space to be exploring this technology, playing around with it, you know, I I appreciate that you brought up students aren't cheating. And I kind of want to flip that. I feel like I don't want you or your peers to be cheated and to be robbed of what's an essential opportunity, right? Like I, I think almost any industry you're going to go into, if you change your mind about teaching, I hope you don't. But if you do, the likelihood of you needing to know how to use these tools is very high. Um, so I'm kind of wondering oh, yeah. if you have any thoughts, you know, if there's any other tools that 
just, you know, not because it's a sign, but because you're curious, you've been playing around with. Um, like I've been talking with a lot of teens who love character AI and who have also been just playing around with the Replica app. Um, and they said, you know, I was just, yeah. just curious, just wanted to experiment with it. So are there any other tools that you were just sort of drawn to, to try out or play around with? Yeah, I'd say the main thing for me, this was one of the many apps that I have, and it was actually the AI um, photo editor app. Mm. And I was taking pictures of our school campus, and I was, you know, putting different like Candyland or, you know, Lego or Cartoon. And that to me was just so intriguing and in seeing, you know, it was able to just take this landscape at our school and completely transform it. But people could still tell where that picture was taken. And that was just, to me, felt so cool mm -hmm. being able to do that. And I think in an artistic sense too, like people creating just basically pictures on AI. I recently, um, last year in AP Psychology, was doing a project and it was about the study of dreams. We had to do a dream journal. Mm -hmm. And there was no picture that I could find on the internet that would accurately describe my dreams. But the only way I could really find something that would work was by going in to my photo thing and just typing in random prompts until I found what actually looks like what I was dreaming of. And that was really interesting. And my psychology teacher was like, wow, that's an interesting, I've never really thought of that before. Mm -hmm. But that was the only thing that could really capture, you know, what I was dreaming about. And it was kind of satisfying to me because no one's really ever seen that picture before because AI had just created it. Mm -hmm. So that was one of my really cool observations for what I was that sort of like your that. entry point into AI was sort of the the creativity the creation was that where your first kind of step into learning more about it was or was it something else I'd say that could, pretty much was I remember the first thing that I when I first heard about it I actually asked it to make a poem and you know when you give it names and you just it's really satisfying the way it rhymes things and you know how accurate it is like write a poem about someone who likes technology and goes to a school on an island or whatever and it would just do such a good job of like just perfectly combining all those into something and just seeing it for me seeing it just type everything out is just so intriguing because it's like this is information that it's producing currently it's not like sometimes it's bringing up articles but most of the time you're getting like new information that just raw unedited stuff just coming towards you and i'd say that definitely being able to experiment with the photo editing stuff was just mind-blowing to me there's going to be a lot of teachers listening to this podcast that are going to be wanting to know about plagiarism and what are you seeing when we talk about plagiarism from a from a high school perspective, are you seeing a lot of kids literally just copy and paste and turn in essays? Or are you seeing kids who are more using it like a thought partner are using it in ways like you're saying, where you're, you know, you're doing research on the side and you want to see what it comes up with. Just what are you getting just from your own kind of talking with friends and stuff from your student body? How, how are they leveraging it? Yeah, I'd say at the beginning, at the very beginning, students were using it as a tool, you know, I can just immediately write this. But I think over the summer, that kind of shifted because our teachers started to understand, you know, what is AI and like, how does this work in our school? And people used to, I will say people did used to use it as something where you could just type something sure. in and have it bring up this whole thing. But our schools are very good about in our class syllabus and curriculum stuff. They've actually been adding in classes like AI may be used to help you generate ideas, but not be just directly copy and pasted. And, mm -hmm. you know, teachers, I'd say the biggest thing is if teachers feel comfortable with using AI in their classroom, then I think it gives the students the sense that, okay, well, the teacher knows that if I just try to attempt to use it for copy and pasting essays that aren't made by, you know, a real person, that's not really going to fly. And I think when that shift happened, the students are now using it as the kind of a tool they can talk to, you know, can you write this, rewrite this for me? I don't really understand this question. Can you rewrite it? Or I know in foreign language using it to translate something that if there's not a readily available translator, or yeah. Google translate, just not working, yeah. they can just ask AI. So I'd, I'd say there is a big shift with using it to generate ideas. Like if you're doing a civics project and you need to find something, it's really good at citing where it gets information now. It just adds a link. Yeah. And that's a big, big thing now. So I just say teachers feeling comfortable with it makes the students kind of get that new view on it. Like it's not a cheating device. It's helpfully used. 
I, I love, love that. that you point out, you know, again, no, what, I, I think it's so important teachers realize like students are noticing when you're doing that learning too, right? You know, mm. some of that might even be kind of unspoken. And I do, you know, I'm, I'm really encouraged by a lot of educators in my network who are seeing this as sort of a moment to rethink assessment practice and to say, yeah. what, are the, what does this mean now in terms of me offering students a real opportunity to use these tools and to kind of have like this amplification of their creativity or of their thinking. Um, and I think an important or a useful question for educators is to talk to students about like, what are the aspects of school where you genuinely enjoy the thinking process? Um, and I'm wondering, like, you have access to so many powerful tools right now. Do you have, like, an anecdote, a story of, like, this is something that I do in one of my classes that, like, this is the kind of thinking that I love doing? And, yes, maybe AI is going to be, like, a counterpart in that thinking, but this is, like, if we were doing more of this... You know, like my brain lights up. I notice my classmates also really enjoy it. Like for me, this is what school's about. Totally. Yeah, I'd say mainly when it's working on group projects. I love the social aspect, first of all, of those group projects because generally working with just people automatically makes it more fun for me. And being able to just try to put everyone's thinking onto you know a platform whether it be drawing on paper and i think that in some cases you can just use you can use the ai as a tool that kind of helps put everyone's thinking into words mm -hmm. because i'd say the main thing i always like to go with my friends and we just start writing everything on a whiteboard and then it's just thousands of things and it's like well that's great for our project but we, you know we can't put this into a format immediately and turn it in but being able to use AI to kind of like, okay, well, if we're talking about the industrial revolution and we're going to add something and, you know, what are the key parts of it? But then being able to ask, being able to ask AI, well, how can we put this into words that can more accurately answer the prompt? Because most of the time we're given a prompt. And I'd say that's a big thing for teachers because, you know, the classic, you know, we're giving you a prompt and you finish that. Right. I think right. in part of it, it's actually training students to kind of think of, their own prompt mm. in some ways. And I think that that's a really important skill to have. And I think that's something that AI definitely brings to the table. Like this is something that's, this is something that we need to think about, you know, moving forward. Like, am I just giving students a, like a prompt that's very vague or am I giving students something that's just, you know, pinpoint mm. and just having the ability to have this extra partner with you on those group projects or just within anything it's just a very helpful tool just for organizing every, everyone's thoughts because, you know, everyone has different styles. Some people may be visual, maybe writing, and I think it just brings everyone together in that sense. I love that idea. I love that idea of, you know, the idea that maybe we have to come up with our own prompts and maybe yeah. it is. We're, we're studying the Industrial Revolution and then you give it to the students. Okay, well, what is your prompt? Like, what do you want to know? How, what do you, what one aspect do you want to dig into about the in, industrial revolution or what angle do you want to come from? And can you create a, I call them starter prompts that can get you started with AI to start getting you deeper into, and then you can do your group work. You decide you get, you know, paired up with other people that want to look at it through that same lens or that same uh, Avenue. Uh, yeah. that, that, and again, I love that idea. Cause even what you're talking about is like taking that step back and even putting more ownership of the learning on the student rather than having the teacher come up with well, what's the prompt that all 100 kids are going to do. You could actually have 100 different prompts uh, with kids coming up from different angles because we've got exactly. the tools now that allow you to do that research and look at it from different viewpoints and different perspectives and just things we didn't have, you know, a yeah. generation or two ago. Yeah, very exactly. cool. One of the things that I was really interested in, I really wanted to pick your brain about is when you did the presentation, when I was there working with you, with the staff at the high school, um, you, part of your presentation was about how you and your friends were leveraging AI uh, for even social emotional support. And you were talking about the AI bot that's inside of Snapchat. Maybe you yep. talk about that a little bit. What has that meant for your generation around just yeah. having things like that available to you? Totally. I'd say one of the main things, you know, was coming up today, it was just, when there are certain problems, turning to someone who's one of your friends, you know, the immediate answer is just, you know, block them. Mm. Like, 
put up the barrier, just cut them out. And those, I think, getting opinions from your friends are always biased because you know it's coming from your friends. Mm. And being able to, you know, go into Snapchat or another platform. I know Instagram recently updated. I was doing that yesterday. Um, and being able to talk to something with an unbiased opinion mm. about something is really important to have because it allows you to kind of reflect and think, you know, from a different point of view that's not myself, this could be something that's actually, maybe I am in the wrong for this, but yeah. being able to kind of express your thoughts, maybe there's something you don't really want to talk about with a human, you can just go to the AI and it just provides you with clear, very clear resources, just kind of an unbiased opinion. And I think that nowadays, since all of us are very, I, most of us are very social and on the digital world of social media, it's, it's challenging to find that. It's challenging, you know, go to an adult if you're being cyber bullied or whatever and stuff like that. But being able to just ask just a simple question and immediately get an answer. You don't get left on red. That's what I said at that presentation. You don't get left on red. Yeah. You don't get left on open. You don't get ghosted because mm. it's there to help you. And mm. it has good knowledge of how to kind of proceed through social situations. So I just say that opinion that it gives is really important to consider. I mean, it's almost sort of like a, a little bit of a filter, right? <laughs> and I'm thinking, you know, you're giving it in the context of your generation. I think my generation, quite a bit older than yours, also could use that, right? Like, um, I, I, because I think it's sort of, and this is where I get upset when I hear people say things like, this is going to ruin communication, where I think, actually, this is a really cool mirror, potential mirror for yeah. reflecting on how do I speak with people, right? Like, do I have almost enough right. friction in there that like slows me down? Is that what I want to say to my colleague, to my friend, to my family member? Um, so I think there's kind of like a real opportunity in that. And there's been some research that's come out. There's a lot of um, therapy bots. And not everybody has access to therapy for a variety of reasons. It can be expensive. And this research has suggested, actually, that many users of the therapy bots feel more comfortable, like, having that anonymous support, right? And, you know, we were having this conversation right. and a few people were saying, like, hmm, that's really sad. And I'm thinking, is it? I don't know that it's sad that people are getting support if they want support. So I'm, I'm kind of wondering, like, you know, I know there's a lot of fear around AI. There's a lot of fear anytime there's a new technology for a teacher right. who's listening. And maybe they're, they are, they are feeling that anxiety of like, this is going to change so much, not just about the classroom, but about the world. Do you have a message for those teachers who are thinking like, I just feel so worried I just feel so worried about what this means. Um, you know, I think it's always important that they listen to folks who have experience using the technology to get their take on it. So what might be your words of wisdom to that person who, who really just feels so, so concerned and so full of fear? I'd say this is a situation where it's like you take a step back and you have to think normally it's like the older generation that kind of comes back and it's like, comforts the younger generation like hey this is we can get through this we're going to figure it out but i think in this case it kind of flips and it's more of like this is kind of where the younger generation has to say you know what we're we're learning how to use this we have experience in the social world and you know social media we have that and i know with the older generation not everyone has social media and i think at this point in time being able to kind of notice these social things happening in our generation is a good example of what kind of how we can proceed in the future with you know these are things that are here now like when Facebook came out yeah. I wasn't really involved in that because I was too young but people are scared of that and when you get scared of things you step back and you mm -hmm. don't really learn about them but that happens a lot with technology at our school you know for getting a smart board or whatever and it's like oh, i don't want to write with digital ink but in the end there are more beneficial things with this new technology and i think being able to just feel comfortable using that maybe you don't want to add it into your life but just being able to like okay you know what i know that this is providing support for students and being able to understand it and especially 
like I use it from time to time, and it's just like it does benefit people. And I'd say the biggest thing is just slowly ease into it. It's not something that just appears. It's not like a box that appears at your door. It's like here's AI. I have to learn how to use it, and I have to support it. No, you don't. You can just every day experiment with the prompt, slowly ease into it, and start to learn about it. Because that's the biggest thing is just educating yourself. Because if you don't, and if you just you know go based off other people's opinions, that's not going to really help you. Mm. So just being able to successfully teach yourself about that, you have to do it yourself. Mm. You can't no outside sources. You have to experience it for yourself, and that's I think helped a lot of our teachers was just using it firsthand, not hearing about it from another staff member, but using it firsthand and actually talking to it directly. Yeah. And I would agree. I mean, in the trainings that I do, I mean, that's the first thing we do is just open it up and you've got to start playing with it. You can read all the headlines you want to read, but until you've actually given some prompts and see what these things can do, it's really hard to explain to somebody what they do without actually experiencing it and experimenting with them, right? And seeing what they do. So I love that. Are there any fears you have around AI as a, as a generation, as somebody as you're looking around the way that your, you, your friends are using this or things you've read, is there anything that worries you about the use of AI in your future? I'd say in the educational sense, I really don't because when you think about it, you're, whatever you're asking it, it's going to provide you something. And you're going to read whatever it provides you with. And pretty much most of the stuff it says, if you're asking a prompt, you know, how did the Industrial Revolution start? Or what was the big turning point in it? It's going to provide you with something. Mm. And being able to just read that, you're absorbing that information. And I think lots of people are saying, well, this is going to cut off, you know, people getting a good education. But people are still going to school. People are using it in school as a tool to help them. And personally, I think it's something that's really cool. I think it's, you know, providing opportunities for students with social emotional issues Mm -hmm. in language arts, being able to provide with correcting sentences and analyzing books. And I think in some cases, it if you ask it to do a whole thing, it's not always going to do that. It's going to make you think. It's Mm going to say, well, I've looked at a few props and this is what I found for you. And it's not going to just give you everything that you it's going to make you go out and look for that. And I think that's a big misconception that people have. Is it just going to provide you with stuff, copy and paste, turn it? That's right. not the case. Right. That's not the case. Because teachers and everyone is equipped with the tools so they know what to look for. And students know that, hey, this is just by using this to just copy and paste a whole essay into something. That's not learning. And we have that knowledge. Of, you know, that's not really a good thing to do is just turn this stuff in that I didn't even work on. I think it's just important to keep that in mind because it's just very easy to say, well, this is just going to take over. We're not going to have any jobs left. It's going to make some things easier. Could provide people with more leisure jobs, you know, because not having to manage a whole thing, but being able to, you know, ask a chatbot, hey, can you bring up this rule or go to this section in the Constitution and find something? It's just a tool. It's a resource. Mm. It's not a person. I think that's what people get confused with. Mm. I love that. I love that. Well, Max, thank you so much for taking time today uh, out of your busy schedule and out of your school life. I uh, appreciate uh, your librarian giving you some space there to uh, have a chat with us today. Trisha, any last final thoughts? Just, I mean, what a reminder, everything that you said, Max, you know, for educators who are listening, I think your guidance, your thoughtfulness serves as a really critical reminder If you are talking about AI and you're not listening to students, you're doing yourself a disservice. So thank you so much for just Mm. being such a bold, perfect example of that. And um, I wish you the absolute best with the rest of your senior year. It's a it's a important year. So um, I just hope that you you make the most of it. And um, congratulations. Thanks. Thanks for having me today.